Happy Sunday, everyone. We hope that you are doing well, that everything is good with you. And it's the first Sunday of May. Grabe, konti na lang. Magpapasko na. Malapit na. Again, thank you for joining our online worship services dito sa Facebook, tsaka sa YouTube. Kindly share this link and uh, even tag your friends para madami po tayong sabay-sabay mag-worship at uh, mag- mag- makikinig ng preaching regarding the faithfulness of our God. You know, our God, He is faithful. He is trustworthy. He is God who is a covenant-making covenant keeping and covenant fulfilling God. No sinabi ni Lord, ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. We know that this is God's invitation for us to pray and to ask of him. So join me as we pray. Tayo mananalangin. Bago tayo mag-worship, mag-pray muna tayo. Let's pray. Lord, we worship you, we bless you, we thank you for who you are. Ikaw ang Diyos na dakila tapat noon, ngayon, at mag- magpakailanman. Panginoon, bini-worship ka namin, bini-bless ka namin. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Your mercies are new every morning. Lord, we want to thank you for good health. And Lord, we thank you for our family, Lord. We thank you for our loved ones. We thank you, Lord, for our, for good relationships, Lord. We also thank you, Lord, for our growing relationship with you. Tunay nga, Panginoon, you are the author and the perfecter of our faith. And as we come to you, Lord, we know that you are God who listens and you are God who answers our prayers. Lord, we pray for your provision, We pray, Lord God, and declare that it is you who will supply our every need. Lord, alam mo ang pangangailangan ng bawat isa. At tapat ka at dakila, Panginoon, na natugunin ang bawat pangangailangan. Lord, maraming maraming salamat po. Lord, we we are also praying for your protection. For your name is a strong tower. You are our tower of refuge and of strength. Lord, thank you for divine protection upon us, your divine protection upon our loved ones. And Lord, we thank you for the peace. Lord, you are our Prince of Peace. Sa kalagitnaan ng mga nangyayari sa, 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 sa paligid namin, Panginoon, Lord, meron kaming confidence, meron kaming strength, at meron kaming peace na nanggagaling sa iyo. Maraming, maraming, maraming salamat, Panginoon. Nakatanggap po tayo ng prayer request. Uh, merong uh, request for the medical students in the University of Perpetual Help. They are praying, they're asking for prayers that they would finish their studies strong this year and that they'll be prepared for next year. Samahan niyo po ako, ipanalangin natin sila. 
Panginoon, maraming salamat po sa buhay ng mga studyanting ito. Lord, you know them by name. So Lord, we ask that you bless them. You ask, Lord God, that your favor would rest upon them. And Lord, allow them to finish strong sa kanilang studies and prepare them for the next level ng kanilang medical uh, education. Lord, as you bless them, Lord, they will be a blessing to their families and to their friends. Thank you, Lord. We also receive a prayer request for uh, complete healing and recovery from a recent uh, operation and favorable findings from biopsy. Uh, halika, pag-pray din natin ang ating kapatid. Panginoon, salamat sa act of faith ng aming kapatid na sinend niya yung prayer request niya. And Lord, we know that you are God who answers prayers. So even right now, in the name of Jesus, we pray for complete healing and speedy recovery, Lord, full and speedy recovery upon our brother. And Lord, we pray for favorable results sa kanyang biopsy. Lord, thank you. Lord, glorify your name for you are God who heals us. And Lord, we bless you and we bring back to you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and Amen. Please continue to send us your prayer requests through bit.ly slash victorylpprayer. And again, we'll be more than happy to pray for you and to believe for God's breakthrough in your life. Our God is good. Our God is wonderful. He is awesome. Amen. The faithful God, the trust worthy God. So let us worship our Lord together. Let's worship our God. Amen. Mm-hmm. 
amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost but now I am found was blind but now In whom I trust. 
Yes, Lord, you are faithful, never failing. You are steadfast, unchanging. When I call, you will answer, my God, whom I trust. Let me read Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Have you not known, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint nor grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. Everlasting is our God. Everlasting is His faithfulness. Everlasting is His mercies. Everlasting is His, His goodness to each and every one of us. His mercies are new every morning. His love never-ending, eternal, everlasting. He is faithful. Let us pray. Lord, we bless Your name. There is none like you. Wala kang katulad, Panginoon. Pinupuri ka namin, sinasamba. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Lord, we bless you and we worship you, Lord. Lord, even right now, we are praying for those of us who are sick. If you are sick if, or if you know anybody who is sick, this prayer, agree with me with this prayer or just lift up your hands as an act of faith and we will pray for God's healing. Let us pray. Lord, you see our hands. And Lord, you see what's going on in our hearts. Father, we pray for your healing upon our brothers and upon our sisters who are sick. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let healing, wholeness come upon their bodies from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet. Lord, we hold on to your word that it is by your stripes and by your wounds that we have been healed. As Lord, we claim it even now in Jesus' name. Lord, for our brothers and sisters who are sick with COVID, Lord, in Jesus' name, strengthen their immune system and allow their bodies to recover from this illness. Lord, we declare that they are COVID survivors, Lord. They will, uh, they will survive and Lord, they will overcome this sickness through the power of your name. For you are God who heals us. And Lord, we give you all the glory. We bless you, Lord. And Lord, right now, we speak peace to the hearts of each and every one. Allow us to have peace and assurance in you for you are the almighty God you are God you are good and you are in complete control you are sovereign and Lord we worship you and we bless your name this we pray in Jesus name Amen and Amen Sige Paul, let's give God praise let's praise the Lord our God is faithful He is trustworthy Alam nyo po, si Lord talagang tapat, talagang dakila siya. Siya ay tumutugon sa mga panalangin natin. We as a church, we are called to pray and, and to seek the Lord. And as we go through life, we know that we are not going through this alone because si Lord nag-promise siya. Sabi niya, I will not leave you, I will not forsake you. So kung ikaw ay uh, tested positive, ng COVID at meron kang mga symptoms we'd like to let you know that we are here for you narito ang church to pray for you so we can pray for you sa audio call or vid call or even zoom just click the link bit slash uh, bit.ly slash victory lp pray for me and this is specifically for COVID patients. Again, if you are a COVID patient, like test positive ka, or meron kang kakilala na COVID patient, you can click the link and we will acknowledge within 24 hours and we will schedule a prayer time with you. Again, we'd like to let you know the church is here for you and that you are not alone. Today also is our Missions Sunday. We have a Missions Update. You see, we are called to be salt and light of the earth. We advance God's kingdom by planting churches in strategic cities of the world. 
Our heart's desire is that local leaders be raised up and empowered to continue God's mission in their nation. Panuuri natin tong video na to sa makapangyarihan na ginagawa ng Diyos sa nation of Timor-Leste. Let's watch this video. I'm Pastor Gilbert Naron, and I've been here together with my family since January of 2013. The church plant got started right in the middle of the campus. Our strategy was to become teachers. We were volunteer lecturers. And that was the strategy that God has given us, to be able to connect to the locals, to be able to build friendships with them, to be able to get to know the culture. God has raised a lot of young leaders in this nation from those campuses to be able to just connect with them because their influence is even more and more expanding. It's just amazing what God has been doing. The church is growing and nothing can stop it from advancing. The 10 days teams that were sent here were really amazing help to every one of us. Tom got saved in one of those 10 days teams. He was just a student at that. God gave me the opportunity to be able to disciple him. And we're excited, not only with the life of Tomas, but also with the life of eight other campus missionaries, local campus missionaries, who have given each of their lives for the work of advancing God's kingdom. We will soon be leaving Timor-Leste. But we know the work that God has started in here, He will bring it unto completion. Right now, we are we're having our services here, every nation center Colmera. We have average of 70 to 80 uh, people attending our services. And we are excited. We're excited to see this place expand to plant another church in the east part of Dili. A few weeks ago, the, there is a big flood hit the city. One of the areas that was very much affected, we are going to plant a church. It's an opportunity for us to actually help and sending reliefs. And with that, we have established our presence somehow in that place. We are not just giving reliefs, but we're also praying for them. We're also ministering to them hope. As the leadership is transitioning to the locals, I am grateful that I'm not advancing the kingdom of God alone, but the missionaries, especially Pastor Gilbert and his family, and also the 10 days who have come here and impacted many lives has prepared not just me, but a great team that will also help me in advancing God's kingdom here. I'd like to say thank you very much for, uh, so for sowing in the nations. Thank you for continually praying for, for the nations. Your prayer make very much impact. We feel your prayers as we continue to advance the kingdom of God. And those for those who have been faithfully giving, thank you so much for your giving. Thank you so much for your generosity. May the Lord bless you, Papa. Whenever we plant churches, we lead with the idea of leaving. Our heart is to raise local leaders like Tom, who will continue the mission in the years to come. Thank you for your prayers and generosity. Together, let's continue to plant and establish churches in strategic cities and raise local leaders in every nation. I'm Pastor Gilbert Naron, and I've been here together with my family since January of 2013. The church plant got started right in the middle of the campus. Our strategy was to become teachers. We were volunteer lecturers. And that was the strategy that God has given us, to be able to connect to the locals, to be able to build friendships with them, to be able to get to know the culture. God has raised a lot of young leaders in this nation from those campuses to be able to just connect with them because their influence is even more and more expanding. It's just amazing what God has been doing. The church is growing and nothing can stop it from advancing. The 10 days teams that were sent here were really amazing help to every one of us. Tom got saved in one of those 10 days teams. He was just a student at that. God 
gave me the opportunity to be able to disciple him. And we're excited, not only with the life of Tomas, but also with the life of eight other campus missionaries, local campus missionaries, who have given each of their lives for the work of advancing God's kingdom. We will soon be leaving Timor-Leste. But we know the work that God has started in here, He will bring it unto completion. Right now, we are we're having our services here, every nation center, Colmera. We have average of 70 to 80 uh, people attending our services. And we are excited. We're excited to see this place expand to plant another church in the east part of Dili. A few weeks ago, the, there is a big flood hit the city. One of the areas that was very much affected, we are going to plant a church. It's an opportunity for us to actually help and sending reliefs. And with that, we have established our presence somehow in that place. We are not just giving reliefs, but we're also praying for them. We're also ministering to them hope. As the leadership is transitioning to the locals, I am grateful that I'm not advancing the kingdom of God alone, but the missionaries, especially Pastor Gilbert and his family, and also the 10 days who have come here and impacted many lives has prepared not just me, but a great team that will also help me in advancing God's kingdom here. I'd like to say thank you very much for, uh, so for sowing in the nations. Thank you for continually praying for, for the nations. Your prayer make very much impact. We feel your prayers as we continue to advance the kingdom of God. And those for those who have been faithfully giving, thank you so much for your giving. Thank you so much for your generosity. May the Lord bless you. Bye. Whenever we plant churches, we lead with the idea of leaving. Our heart is to raise local leaders like Tom, who will continue the mission in the years to come. Thank you for your prayers and generosity. Together, let's continue to plant and establish churches in strategic cities and raise local leaders in every nation. Maraming salamat po through your partnership and your prayer and generosity. We are able to fulfill God's call to the nations. Let us continue to pray for our local teams at Timor Leste that they will be empowered by God's grace to raise up more leaders for the generations to come. That the mission of God in their nation will continue and the gospel will continue to advance in Timor Leste. Now, as we continue to worship God through our giving, allow me to read Isaiah chapter 12, verse 2. It says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. We praise God for what He has done through His Son, Jesus Christ. And as an ultimate act of love, God gave His Son who gave His life so that we may live. And as we express our love to our God by putting our trust in Him, as we give and return our tithe and offering unto the Lord, let the Lord be glorified and let the Lord be enthroned even in our giving. Tayo manalangin, Panginoon, maraming salamat sa oportunidad na ibinibigay mo sa bawat isa sa amin. That is to worship you, to honor you, to enthrone you through the giving back of our tithes and the giving of our offering. This we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you as you give.
Good day, everyone. Welcome to Victory Las Piñas. I'm Edre, one of the pastors here. And uh, today, we're going to be continuing our series called Trustworthy. This is our second week of our series, uh, talking about the book of Isaiah. In fact, um, yung last series natin, Salt and Light, we were also talking about the book of Isaiah. And uh, we've actually culminated that with our leadership, uh, with our discipleship convergence yesterday. And that was such an awesome time, even though lahat tayo online lang, pero talagang, you know, you can still see the faithfulness of God, even with our current setup. And like what I'm saying, we're continuing with that. Uh, from Salt and Light, we are on, we're still on the book of Isaiah uh, with our Trustworthy series. Uh, Pastor uh, Sunny preached last week for our first week of this new series. So how do we consider someone was trustworthy? How do we know someone is trustworthy? Ayan. Um, you know what? Why don't we take this time to type in in the chat box? Ano ba ang, paano mo ba masasabi na ang isang tao ay trustworthy? What are some of the things or qualification para malaman mo na ang isang tao ay trustworthy? Ayan. We'll, we'll, we'll go through. Uh, some of our leaders will go through. Some of our staff will go through some of your answers. And we'll give you time to type it in the chat box right now. Trustworthy. How do you know someone is trustworthy? Mapagkakatiwalaan. Ayan. All right, some of the answers that we've, uh, uh, we've read um, and that we've gotten, may track record of truthfulness. There is a track tra- record of truthfulness that this person always says the, what, what's true, okay? Um, and no fail. Someone who's uh, always fulfilling what they promise. Someone uh, talagang true to their word. That is someone who's trustworthy. Or that person, will, he or she does what is right regardless if they are seen or not. In other words, integrity. So these are some of the words that we have for the word trustworthy. And I'm sure a lot of you have uh, expressed your opinion in the chat box. Uh, also, before I continue, please do hit the share button. Madaling madalian. If you feel like this is a preaching that you, you know, na ma- makaka magbe-benefit sa buhay ng inyong kaibigan, sa inyong mga loved ones, please do click the share button right below the screen on the third part. Uh, you can share this on your walls in messenger groups. You can copy the link as well. Alright. So, trustworthy. So, this is actually what this series is all about. What we're trying to establish in our, in our hearts, in your hearts, sa mga nakikinig, that God's Word is trustworthy. That the Lord is trustworthy. For many, many different reasons. Because of His faithfulness, because of the track record of His truthfulness and His faithfulness on His promises, yung mga pangako ng ating Panginoon. Uh, from the very beginning of time until now, we've seen His faithfulness. Um, even in our current situation, uh, mga pangako na tinupad niya. And rest assured na yung mga pangako na may, marahil ni pa natin nakikita. Promises that we haven't seen yet. Because God's Word, because the Lord is trust trustworthy, we can be assured that those things will come to pass. Na makikita natin, mangyayari yun. Yung mga pangako ng ating Panginoon. So that's why for today, we're gonna look at, uh, we're gonna look at Isaiah's prophetic vision. We're gonna be reading the text. Itong prophetic vision na nakita ni Isaiah is God's promise that involves the entire world. And I have three prayers for you this today. Okay? Tatlong bagay na we, we're hoping that we can accomplish through the preaching of the Word. Number one, that by hearing and seeing this prophetic vision na nakita ni Isaiah, uh, that we will see God's answer to all the crises of the world. Lahat ng issue sa mundo, lahat ng major crisis sa mundo, sa kahit anong bansa, that God has an answer for that by seeing this prophetic vision that Isaiah saw. Number two, that you will, yeah, you, kayong, na, kayong nanonood, makikita nyo, that you will see your part in what God is doing in the world, that you will see your part in how God is changing this world. And then number three, that our prayer is that this will give you hope uh, for the future. As you know what we've been saying, God is trustworthy in His promises, in His faithfulness. So why don't we all uh, read Isaiah 2, 2-5. to Please open up your Bibles. The verse will be provided on the screen as well, pero mas masaya na meron tayong nababasa sa harapan natin. Isaiah 2 to 5, it says here, It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, 
Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations, and shall decide disputes for many peoples, and they, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares. Plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. Verse 5, O house of Jacob, come, let us walk. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for your word. Holy Spirit, open up our hearts, open up our minds. Lord, let your word be embedded in our hearts so that, Lord, not only makikita namin, that we will see, Lord, your, your promise, to this entire world, but we will see, Lord, yes, our part, but at the same time, Lord, the hope that we can only find in you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, Isaiah 2. We've been going again through the book of Isaiah the past weeks. Uh, Isaiah 2 is another prophetic word. It is separate from Isaiah 1. In fact, this particular na binasa natin kanina, verses 2 to 4, were a complete repetition of what Micah, another prophet, saw uh, in Micah 4, 1 to 4. You can just check that out later. Same words, they saw the same thing. Uh, but at the same time, chapters 2 to 5, kanina naka-separate yung chapter 1, chapters 2 to 5 is one long discourse of prophetic vision and word. And this is continuous until verse 5. Uh, but we're only focusing on this because in this particular time, um, ang book of Isaiah, if we have not said this uh, a lot already, the book of Isaiah is really God's way of calling out the nation of Judah, uh, the nation of Israel, yung bansang mahal na mahal niya, bansang pinili niya, the chosen people who are so... Uh, they're very, they're very, uh, they're, they're a very interesting group of people. Masyadong makulit, matigas ang ulo. They are, uh, they are stubborn. They keep, they know that God has chosen them, but they keep running away to God, doing whatever they want. And, uh, you know, it sounds very familiar. Pero God has been, you know, I'm going to call you out. I have these things because of your, of your attitude towards a lot of things. There are many curses. There are many consequences of what's going to happen because of the things that you've been doing. So, ganun yun, until verse 39 of the book of Isaiah. Pero once in a while, we will see encouragement. We, once in a while, we will see a glimmer of hope that God would give them encouragement. God would give them a vision of the future. Um, and, and I believe this is God's way of saying, if you would repent, if you would turn back to me, this is what's going to happen. Chapter 2 is an encouragement like that. So chapter 1, we've seen that. Chapter 2, the beginning of this. Um, if you continue with the rest of chapter 2, makikita nyo na naman yung pattern of God saying, why are you doing this? This is what's going to happen to you. But if you repent, this is what you're reading. This is what just we read in Isaiah 2, 2-5. to so let's look back at it. Basahin muli natin. I said 2 to 3. Uh, 2, 2 to 3. It shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills. And all the nations shall flow to it. And many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go, shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Bakit mountain? Bakit ilang beses natin nabasa mountain? Why the word mountain? It's because in, in, mountains represent something in all religions, whether uh, you know, a pagan religion or any other religion in the world. Every time we talk about the mountain, we're always talking about the dwelling place of God. We're talking about um, nandito ang ating Panginoon. Uh, the, the Greek mythology, the Greek Religion always talks about the gods living in Mount Olympus. And many other religions always talks about because the higher the mountain, the closer it is to the heaven. So maybe God lives on a mountain. So this is the same reference na ginawa ni, ni, no, the, with what Isaiah received in this particular vision. He used the word mountain. The thing is, yung mountain na ginawit is called the mountain of Zion, which is, it's a hill. It's not a mountain. It's a small hill. It's about 
200 meters above sea level. It's not high. Pero why is it saying this? It's, it's just saying that in sa, mun, sa mata ng mundo, they don't look at God as the God. But a day will come where this mountain will rise to the highest. And we will finally see that God in heaven is the one true God. And all the gods of the earth are nothing compared to this God that we worship. And there are many gods that we worship here on earth. Maraming mga just josa na, bina, na sinasamba mga tao. I'm not talking about, sure, the gods of the Greek mythology, the Norse mythology, mga, uh, it, all the kinds of gods in, in history, the Egyptian gods. Maraming ganun. But I'm not talking about that. In our current day and age, we have a lot of gods that we worship. Marami tayong sinasamba. Pera, sinasamba ng mga tao. Money is a god. That all the decisions, all motivation, uh, all accomplishments are driven because of money. For other people, it's their career. It doesn't have to be the, man, the money, but it's the career. I am driven by all my decisions in life. I don't care about anything. I need to get somewhere in terms of my career. For some people, it's their relationships, it's their fa- families. Anything that goes beyond and, and goes above the one true God is our God, small letter G, is what we worship. We could be worshiping our own families. We could be worshiping ourselves. We could be worshiping gadgets. We could be worshiping ministry if it goes beyond the one true God. There are many gods. But God is saying, I am above all those things. They have nothing on Him. And this is what we're reading. And if we continue, Isaiah 2 to 4, number, uh, verse 4 says here, He shall judge between the nations and shall decide disputes for many peoples, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift sword against nation, neither shall they, shall they learn war anymore. Now, before I explain this, uh, siguro na, nabanggit na rin naman natin to. we've mentioned this a lot of times in the previous preachings on the book of Isaiah the references that we're seeing here is really ang fulfillment nito si Jesus Christ I'm gonna say it up here I'm not gonna wait until the end and say you know what all of this is Jesus Christ we're already saying this this the prophecies that we're seeing here um, the entire Bible in fact all point to one person which is Jesus Christ uh, because He is the answer to our lives He is our salvation and so what we're looking at here, and when we say, he, he shall judge between the nations and he shall decide disputes for many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, we're talking about Jesus Christ. Okay? And it says here that he will judge between the nations. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng judge between the nations? Normally, pag isinisip natin yung judge, we're talking uh, about a legal scene. We're talking about a courtroom. May, may judge at may courtroom, may mga lawyer. Uh, but in this particular text, this is not a statement of judgment. This is a statement na ang meaning ng judge here is the one that makes order. The one that gives, that, that arranges things. The one that orders things. Because what Jesus will be doing is Jesus will be bringing reconciliation in this divided world. Jesus will bring reconciliation in this chaotic, divided world. From what we've just read. He shall judge between the nations. He shall, shall dis, uh, decide disputes of many people. They shall beat their swords into plowshares. We live in a divided world. In a literal divided world. Marami tayong bansa. At ang mga bansang to, these national borders have been established for countries to separate from each other. Whereas they're saying, oh, hold on, we are a different country, you can't just go in without a passport. And it, the reason of why these divisions among nations have started is because countries and rulers and leaders and kings and emperors, they don't trust each, trust each other. There's just no trust. We've established this is my kingdom, this is mine. You can't just enter without my permission, without the proper papers, and that's fine. You know, this is just how the world works. We live in a divided world, but it's not just because of the division. These divisions, these kingdoms, these nations have actually caused wars against each other. We have world wars, World World War I, World War II. We have the immediately right after. We have the Korean War. We have Vietnam War right after. Recently, we have this... Thing um, somewhere in Central Asia between Armenia and Azerbaijan. 
if you have been reading the news, there are many things. India and Pakistan are, you know, disputing certain areas of their country. They are kind of at war with each other. Etong nangyari sa West Philippine Sea. Yes, I said West Philippine Sea. <laughs> many countries, and then China versus everyone else, among others. We live in a divided world. We live in a chaotic, divided world. What does this prophecy say about these things? Para saan to? Ang sabi dito, Jesus will bring order in this chaos. Jesus will bring order in this division. In fact, kanina yung binasa natin, to the point where their swords will be turned into plowshares, meaning uh, swords will be turned into plowshares, spears will be turn, turned into pruning hooks. In other words, these will be turned, instead of weapons of death, they will be used for agriculture. They will be used for items for, to give life. The sobrang darating yung panahon, we will come and see a world that God has designed that there is no war, there is no hatred, that instead of weapons, people, uh, people of this world will turn their weapons into something that will give life. Grabe no, grabe yung vision, grabe yung pangako na binibigay sa atin ni Jesus. Zechariah 9, 9 to 10, it says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. We're, again, we're talking about Jesus Christ. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. Obviously, again, a reference to Jesus Christ. And in verse 10, I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off because there's no need. And he shall speak peace. To the nations, he shall rule. He, he, his rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. War has caused so much unnecessary death, unnecessary insecurity. Um, World War II has destroyed a lot of our country, a lot of the capital city as well. Destroyed a lot of people's lives. World War II in Europe and World War I has destroyed millions and millions of lives as well. A lot of unnecessary bloodshed. And sometimes you would think, ah, but why would God allow this? You know, if He's an amazing God, if He's just this good God. We'll, we'll come to that. We'll, we'll get to that. But the truth is, there is a bigger issue at hand. Yung nakikita nating epekto sa mundo na pag-aaway-aaway ng mga bansa, and a, pro- a lot of you are probably asking, ano ba kinalaman itong sinasabi ni Pastor Edrey sa buhay ko? We'll get to that. Pero itong mga nangyayari sa mga bansa, these wars, these um, uh, chaos, this, the, these divisions that we're seeing are actually because of a bigger issue. There is a bigger issue from there. We're talking about the nations. That's already huge in itself. But there is a deeper but a bigger issue at work. I say it two to four. Let's read that again. He shall judge between the nations and he shall decide disputes for many peoples. And it's not just the nations. He, we're talking about disputes of many peoples. Sino bang nagpapaandar ng mga bansa? Who is running the country? These issues that we're seeing, oh, whether COVID responses of the different nations, uh, uh, the, the, the inability of a lot of leadership in, in fulfilling what they need to do in our country and in the nations in the world, sino ba nagpapatakbo nun? Di ba tao? It is the people. So the bigger, deeper issue is us. Why? All these things that are happening in the nations is because of us. That's why Jesus will bring reconciliation in divisive opinions or mga opinion na nagdadala ng pag-aaway, away, or kamantayan ng ibang tao. What does that mean? Okay, let's go here. There are men, we have a lot of opinions. A lot of our opinions doesn't necessarily agree. Okay? Uh, but a lot of it, in fact, several things of it are for fun, friendly competition. Like, Lasal versus Ateneo. I mean, uh, the unending Lasal versus Ateneo. Uh, Kahit hindi ka taga Lasal or Ateneo, sometimes you have a choice. I'm, I'm, I'm with Lasal or I'm with Ateneo. That's, that's fun. Some of you may be Maka Mayward or Kathniel. Okay, fine. Whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Some of you, BTS or your Blackpink. 
And recently, uh, if you're part of Homebodies, I'm not trying to. There is an ongoing discussion on what, who's better, minimalist or maximalist. I don't know where you stand. Um, a lot of people are saying this, a lot of people are doing that. Pero minsan, these fun arguments are actually causing um, division towards people. That's why divisive opinions. Eh. Now, in this particular con conversation between minimalist versus maximalist, a lot, a lot of people are saying, oh, we're better people because we're minimalist. You know, because we're just doing this. We're conserving this. We, we are better people. It's supposed to be fun. But when our opinions and preferences goes, to, goes deeper to the point that we're saying, you are lesser than me because of my opinion and because of your opinion, we have a problem. Opinions like, mas maganda, Mas matalino at mas angat ang lahi ko or my race over yours. That's a problem. That's a divisive opinion. And that particular opinion, filled with pride, filled with self promotion, uh, th this particular thought that we're saying, you know what, maybe because I'm this and I have this skin color, I have this hair, uh, maybe my race. Or, you know, the, my background or my heritage is far better than people that are not like me. And this is the reason why recently we have this Asian hate. Uh, it has been trending for several months. Stop Asian hate. Why? Because a lot of people in the West are blaming us, Asians, for the virus. Could be valid. I don't know. But that's not reason to kill and hurt people that had no, nothing to do with it. It's been going on. Yung mga tao, that they look down on Asians now, it's because, you know what, because of the virus, we have now every right to hurt you. That started with an opinion. The black hate that we've been seeing, the, the racism in this world. Um, I've been to South Africa several times, and one of the fascinating stories, uh, isang, isang sa mga bagay na hanggang ngayon, uh, I can't believe that these things exist, is the apartheid. If you're if you not aware, if you haven't heard this, apartheid really is basically segregating people and they can't gather with each other. They can't be in the same place together. In fact, sa Bansang, South Africa, may mga, may mga lugar na pang white lang. There are, they are, they are areas that are for, the, for colored, meaning mixed, and there are areas just for blacks. And it's usually the worst place because they can't cross to each, to each other's place because they cannot be together. In fact, um, means that alam naman natin if someone is like, say African, someone is black uh, for certain features. But because they want to humiliate them, they have this called the black test. Na alam naman nila a person is not white that they would do certain tests to this person so that they can declare. And it is done in humiliating ways. Uh, they would do the pencil test. Na the drop nila yung pencil sa buhok, and if it falls, you're white. You're colored. If it doesn't fall, you're black. It, they, they would measure the size of the nose, and I got offended with that. Just because, just to humiliate people that have wider nose, because this particular other race is far better, far more superior, because they look a certain way. Grabe, these thoughts, these divisive thoughts that are running rampant in the world. I'm not just saying white people are like this. Uh, there's a country called Rwanda where a group of tribes killed off another tribe because they said, you can't exist. Uh, the, the tribes called the Tutsis and the Hutus. Now, they would go to a school, this particular government, if they found out you belong to this particular tribe, you're dead. And this is racism against people of their own country, against people of their own color, just because they are part of a different tribe. Slavery and killing of the millions of Jews that happens in 19, during World War II. Ang dangerous, no? And it all started with that thought, I am better than you. That's a divisive opinion. Or maybe, you know, mas tama ako dahil matalino ako or I'm smart because I've done my research and I will not listen to anyone else who has opinion or who has counter agreements or people that will disagree with my opinion and anyone that doesn't share my opinion to the very exact letter is my enemy. That's a divisive opinion. That's a divisive mindset. 
You see, w- the reason why these nations are fighting against each other is because of mindsets like these. You are less valuable than us, so we have every right to kill you. We have every right to take what's yours. A Holocaust survivor and a Nobel laureate professor once said, people are united by questions. We all have the same questions. But it is the answers that divide them. The way we interpret the world, the way we answer these things, it is what we divides us. I mean, fine. We have different opinions. But when we say anyone that doesn't share mine is my enemy, that already says so much. They're not your enemy. You just have different views of the world. If nations, yung mga bansa, naglagay ng mga physical borders, ang mga tao naglalagay, nagdodraw ng imaginary lines against other people. And I have seen, especially during the pandemic, this has never been so highlighted, especially during the pandemic. I know we have different political views. I know we have different views and opinions on how the country should be run. But if we say that because you don't believe what I believe, so friendship over, please don't message me. We have nothing to do with you. If you're, a, if you're not a Christian, fine. Sure, go ahead. I mean, I have... But if you're a Christian and you have Jesus and you profess that Jesus is with you, uh, maybe it's time for us to look, at, look back at that divisive opinion and say, Jesus, what am I doing? This particular seed of pride that has been placed in us is the reason why the world is divided. But the vision of Jesus Christ, the vision that I say received from God, she says, I will bring all the nations and I will judge and I will make order. I will resolve the disputes of the people. This particular sin, seed rather, of pride, is the one very thing that Jesus was addressing in this particular text. Why? Because, kanina pinag-usapan natin, there's this huge problem. The nations of the world are against each other. So much division. The nations are divided. So much war. So much death. So much hatred. And it's all because of people. At ang mga tao, ay, because we have so much different opinions and some opinions, and we're starting to elevate ourselves based from our opinions, based from our educational background, based from what we believe in. And we started saying na, I am better than anyone else because of what I believe in, because of what I see about myself, which is a problem in itself. And that has naging problema ng buong mundo. Imagine yung napakaliit na opinion na yun can blow up to big proportions to the point where Hitler said, an entire group of people has no right to live. They are lower than animals. We will kill them and torture them because they have no rights. That started from that thought. I am better. And you see, that came from a far bigger problem. So, a bigger problem, another bigger problem than what I've talked about. And it is still, and it is deeper. What is this? This started the moment nung kinain ni Adan at ni Eva ang prutas. They ate the fruit and said, maybe I don't need God. Maybe I can rule myself. And sin started growing in their hearts. Romans 8, 7 to 8, ang sabi doon, because of sin, for the mind that is set on the flesh, yung utak na nakaset sa flesh, which is our sinful nature, is hostile to God. For it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Because of sin, what happened when sin, sin grew inside of them, our hearts are meant to be hostile towards God. In fact, what it's saying is because of sin, our, now, our hearts are now wired to hate God every day. And you're probably saying, Ako, hindi ko naman hate si God. I grew up in church, you know, I've been serving and all. Um, sure, but the mere fact that we have a sinful nature, uh, we can say whatever we want to say, but it is meant 
to hit God. Meaning, it is meant to say, maybe I go first before God. Maybe my needs first will go before God. Maybe what I want and my own preference is far more important. Maybe my own opinion is far more important than what God says. That's an example of that. That's sin at work. And that's alive in me. Ako yun. Ako yung nagsabi nun, talaga ba? I don't think I hate God. I grew up in church. I served. I was part of kids' church. I was part of Every Nation Campus growing up. I was part of campus ministry. I'm part of the music team. My dad's a pastor. How can I hate God? I love this life. Maybe that's the point. I love the life. But the truth is my heart couldn't accept that it hated God. So the moment, the day that that was revealed to me, and man, I have no escape from this. Kaya nga dumating si Jesus eh. In fact, Isaiah 2 to 5, it says there, so vision ni God for the nations, but this is the issue. And then a deeper issue, which is the people. And then the deeper issue, which is the sin in the people, tayo. But in Isaiah 2 to 5, I love what it says here. O house of Jacob, he's talking to the, his people, come, let's walk. After the vision of Isaiah, God addressing the issue that we have, what he said at the end is, but come here, let's walk. It was still an invitation to come to him. It was still an invitation to partake with him. God offered an invitation because left to ourselves, wala tayong solution eh. Yun yung na-realize ko eh. Parang wala akong solution dito. Ginawa ko naman lahat pero my heart is wired to hate God. Yes! That's why I needed the gospel. That's why Jesus had to die on the cross so that the moment his blood was placed on me, my heart started getting arranged. Because this is what Jesus did. Jesus came to bring reconciliation with the divine Father. This is what Jesus did on the cross. Eh? Because of sin, hate towards God. We cannot be with God. Because of sin, we cannot come to God, but God the Father. But because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, pinagbati niya tayo. Dahil nga galit na galit ang ating Panginoong Ama sa kasalanan at tayo ay punong-puno na kasalanan. We cannot be together. But because Jesus Christ died on the cross, He brought us together. Because of His blood. Colossians 1, 19-20, it says here, For in Him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through Him to reconcile to Himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace, making peace by the blood of His cross. That because of the blood of Jesus, He paid for our sin and for our shame, and now because we are purified, He removed the power of sin over our lives. He removed our sin, actually, by paying... Uh, our sin with His blood, we will now reconcile to Jesus Christ and because of that, we can now come to God the Father and we're now reconciled to God the Father. Na dati sobrang hiwalay na hiwalay tayo because of our sin, God reconciled us together. But you see, what happened here is that, and we're probably saying, anong kinalaman ko dun sa mga issues ng mundo? Ito, ito yung kinalaman dito because of the seed of, seed of sin in our lives, the seed of pride in our lives that Jesus Christ defeated on the cross for you. That means I don't need to live in divisive opinions because my opinion has to be of Jesus Christ. My opinion has to be of what the Bible says. My opinion has to be, Lord, what is your will in my life? Not because of our own good works. We can't do that on our own. But if you are a person and you're, 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 you're professing that, man, I have received Jesus Christ. I have seen His glory. I have seen His goodness. I have received His faithfulness and His forgiveness. That's what happens. And the power of sin in our lives is now removed. The power of sin, that if we let it remain, can affect groups of people, can, affect, can, can start giving us divisive opinions, can start making us think that we're better than others, and then from there, can blow up to what the world is experiencing now. Jesus Christ defeated that seed in us by defeating that seed of sin on the cross. So here's the thing. Having said that, 
kung ang issue ng mundo, the issues of the world, the issues of the different, the, the, the divided nations are because of the people, the divisive opinions and views of the people, which is also dahil sa mga kasalanan at seed ng sin sa buhay natin. That means, if we have been transformed by Jesus Christ, He has redeemed us and He has justified us from our sin. That means, is it possible that we are carrying the answer and the solution to the issues of the nations? Kung binago sa atin ni Jesus at tinalo niya yung source of the entire issues of the world, is it possible that we're actually carrying the answer. We're carrying the gospel of Jesus Christ. The defeated sin and shame that started all of these. And so, if we're carrying that, is it possible that this particular vision and prophecy that we've just read, yung binasa natin kanina, that we are a part of that. That Jesus is saying, I will bring this to here and you will see nations come to me, you will see nations worship me, you will see the countries of the world, regardless if they don't believe in me, or if, they, if they believe in me or not, they will, they will come and worship me because of what Jesus Christ did. And now we have received that. This is why we're passionate about world missions. This is why we're passionate about going into the nations and preaching the gospel. This is why we're passionate about going into those nations and serving the needs of the people over our own opinions of ourselves. This is how we're changing the world. We can, yes, we're serving the world, but we're serving it with the gospel. The gospel that changed us, the, the gospel that changed and removed that seed of sin in our lives, the seed of pride in our lives. In fact, let me encourage you, talking about nations, talking about all of these. We, we, we are in Las Piñas. We have a lot of international students, you know. Uh, we have a lot of Indian students and India is very, it's affected so much because of the COVID virus. Take time. If you know someone from church who's an Indian national, send them a message, encourage them. That's starting it. That's doing it. Can volunteer with our Every Nation campus with what they're doing with international students. Or it doesn't have to be just an, about international students. It could be your community. The seed of sin has been defeated in you through Jesus Christ. That means you are carrying the message and the answer in your community. Sa barangay mo. Sa, o, sa office mo. Sa family mo. This is our call. God is trustworthy. We're going to see this happen. But He's inviting us. Like what this verse said. Oh, house of Jacob, come. Let us walk. Come. God said this to the people, to His people, not to put them down, but He's saying this to the people so that these people will realize us, we will realize that we need Him. And then the moment God invites, we will say, Lord, here we are. Send us. Why don't we all close our eyes right now? Lord, we thank you sa mga nakikinig po ngayong araw na to to the people of Las Piñas, God. Sa so, mga mga mayroon, mga Las Piñeros na nakikinig ngayon, Panginoon. Lord, may, may pagtawag ka para sa aming syudad. You have a call that you give into our city. And not just the city, God. You have a call that you have given us for our nation and for the nations beyond. Lord, a day will come and we would love to see it. We don't know when we're going to see it. If we don't know, if, 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 kung mangyayari ba sa lifetime namin yun. Pero Panginoon, what, what we are sure of is that it will happen and that you're inviting us to be a part of it. So Lord, we raise up our hands and we're saying, God, we want like to partake with it. Maraming nangyayari sa mundo, maraming kasiraan, maraming kamatayan, maraming, there's so much pain, there's so much hurt. 
But Lord, we have the answer. You have given us the answer, Lord. And that is your love. That is your forgiveness. That is your faithfulness. That is your death on the cross. Because Lord, because of your death, we are now being given life. And life to the full. Lord, dahil sa death mo, Panginoon, you brought us out of eternal death to eternal life. And we are holding on, Lord, to, to, to eternal life that you have given us, Lord. And other people need at us, need that as well. Lord, yung mga kabarangay namin, yung mga kamag-anak namin, yung kapatid ko, Panginoon, yung tatay ko, yung nanay ko, yung mga ka-opisina ko, Panginoon, Panginoon, kailangan ng salita mo, Lord. They need to hear the message that changed my life. They need to hear the forgiveness that I received in my life. Lord, they need to hear, say, Lord, give me the strength, give me the grace, God, so that I can speak even though sometimes, Panginoon, nahihiya ko, even though sometimes I feel like, Lord, I am bounded by my own uh, limitations. God, Thank you that because you are trustworthy, you are powerful, God, and I can move beyond my limitations, Lord. And God, if you are calling me to go to the nations, Lord, give me the grace to start right now. Lord, give me the burden, God, to love the people of other countries. Lord, sa mga internationals na nilagay mo sa, sa, sa city namin here in Las Piñas, so mga, Lord, yung mga Chinese, God, citizens that are, are just outside our facility, Lord, give Give me the, the, the burden for them. Lord, to the Indian and African students, Lord, to even to the European and American students, Lord, uh, in, in Casimiro and in Perpetual. God, give us the, the, the burden and love for them. Lord, even the Iranians, God, that are in, the, in our city. Manami sa kanila, Panginoon, hindi ka nakikilala. Maliit kami, Panginoon, left to ourselves. But to you, God, we can start seeing this slowly come to pass that the nations will come to you and worship you. So we thank you and honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Wow, thank you so much for that powerful preaching, Pastor Ed Ray. Indeed, sin separates us, but Jesus brings us reconciliation. Jesus is our Prince of Peace, and because of what Jesus has done on the cross, we have peace with God, peace with ourselves, and peace with our fellow man. Ito ang kaloob ng Panginoon sa atin, kapayapaan. Kung ikaw ay narito at hindi mo pa tinatanggap ang kapayapaan na kinakaloob ng Diyos para sa bawat isa sa atin, I invite you, let us pray, let us receive the peace that is coming from Jesus by accepting Him as Lord, Savior, and King. And as we pray, we'll be asking Jesus for the forgiveness of all our sins. Samahan mo ako. Manalangin tayo. Father, I come to you just as I am. Lord, I am a sinner and I need a Savior. Lord, would you forgive me of all my sins? Lord, I put my trust in you. Indeed, ikaw ang kordero ng Diyos na nag-aalis ng kasalanan ng sanlibutan. Panginoon, patawarin niyo po ang lahat ng aking mga kasalanan. I put my trust in you, Lord, and I declare, Jesus is my Lord. And I believe in my heart that Jesus is raised from the dead. Lord, right now, by faith, tinatanggap ko po ang kapatawaran ng lahat ng aking kasalanan at tinatanggap ko po ang buhay na walang hanggan na ikaw lamang ang nakakapagbigay. Salamat, Panginoon, sa kapayapaan na kaloob mo sa akin. Salamat po sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Kung ikaw ay isa sa mga tumanggap kay Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, lagay mo dyan sa comment section, I receive and would like to journey with you, get to know you, and also continue to pray for you. Gusto ka rin namin imbitahan dyan sa, sa link na yan. If you click that link, you'll be part of a small group and would like you to be part of uh, a small discipleship group so that you'll, meet, you'll be meeting friends who will journey with you, pray for you, and encourage you. Please click the link, bit.ly slash victory lp connect. And as you do that, you'll not be only connecting yourselves to, to the church, but to friends who will journey with you. Again, we are also encouraging everybody, allow us to uh, pray with you, allow us to stand in faith with you and believe for breakthroughs in your life. If you have prayer requests, click that link, bit.ly slash victorylpprayer and we'll be more than happy to pray for you. Before we end, allow me to declare a pastoral blessing upon you. Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for your word. Indeed, you are God who reconciles us back to a loving relationship to you. Thank you, Lord. 
Lord, would you release your blessing to your people today? The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. And the Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn toward you and grant you peace. Nothing missing. Nothing broken. Wholeness and wellness be upon you. Let the love of God and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of us. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us in our online worship services. See you next Sunday. Have a blessed week. God bless you.